Good night. You blew my kiss. You waved. You ran back to hug him. <laughs> Good night. Good night. You shouted across the way to one another. He moved one of his arms in a big wave so you couldn't miss it. Things couldn't be dragged out any longer. Another, after one after one more shared smile, you opened the door and went inside, shutting it behind you. A few steps in, you saw your family gathered in the living room. They were still busy unpacking and cleaning. You added the things you brought to the pile on the kitchen counter. Mom stood up, rubbing her eyes a bit. She yawned loudly. <laughs> I'm bushed. How about we finish the rest of the choice tomorrow? Yes, honestly, it's too late for this. Thanks. Please and thank you. Ma put her hands on her hips and turning to assess the room. Ma was not one who liked to leave a mess, but she All sighed. Right. I suppose we can make an exception to the, to the usual rule. It has been a really long day. <laughs> Liz grinned contently. We wasted no time in skipping over to you and hooked you into a side hug. <laughs> Good night. I hope you have the loveliest dreams of you know who. Lee ended that sentence with a wink and a hearty laugh. She let you go. I hope you have good dreams too. You hugged her back. You shook your head. You blushed. You laughed. You shook your head. <laughs> Lee giggled at that. Her grin widened till, till it was going ear to ear. After a moment, her expression softened. Lee put a hand on your shoulder. Hey, after today, we all deserve a good sleep. Yeah. Here's to us, Z. Tonight, tomorrow, and forever. You smirked at that. Yeah, family forever. Thanks, Lee. You're really lucky. Yeah, family forever. Lee leaned in close to whisper in your ear. You didn't fail to catch the teasing look on her face. Aww. Exactly! There's no escape! That got a laugh out of you. You lightly pushed her shoulder. Lee stretched her arms high over her head. She yawned loudly and looked at you with tired eyes. <laughs> I think that's my cue to head to bed. Bye! I think so, too. Have fun sharing the room with Liz. She laughed and... At that, and Lee shuffled off towards the guest room bedroom. Before you had a chance to do anything else, you could feel the top of your head being tapped. You spun around to see Liz smirking. <laughs> Nighty night. I'm headed to bed too. It's been a long day, and I have a lot to prepare for tomorrow. Exhaling, you automatically start fixing the back of your head. When Liz didn't immediately walk away, you smiled softly at her. Everything okay? Her gaze moved away. You knew she had more to say. You waited patiently for Liz to compose her thoughts. Just a been a good summer. It was nice to come back home. You nodded, and Liz gave you a teasing nudge as she went by amused. By amused, you turned and watched her go. I love you, baby sister. I love you, too. Liz stopped walking and stared at you for a moment. She smiled softly at you. <laughs> Get some sleep soon. The morning will be here faster than you know it. I will. When Liz was out of sight, Mom stared up at the next conversation over her shoulder. Hmm. <laughs> Aren't you heading to bed too? I want to relax first. I want to finish getting everything here. I want to relax first. Desperately, you needed some time to decompress and clear your mind. You worried if you went off to bed now that you would end up staring at the ceiling all night. <laughs> okay. Ma came over too, smiling understandably. She pulls you into a big hug. Love you. Alright, <laughs> you do what you need to do. When you were done hugging Ma, Mom pulled you into another hug. Their actions basically handing you off to the other had you laughing jovially. Uh, you're the best parents. <laughs> Ma's eyes sparkle from your compliment. Mom pulled you into another hug. <laughs> Good night, kiddo. Sleep tight. Good night, sweetie. Good night. After that, your mom's headed to off towards their bedroom down the hall. You were about to turn the other direction when you heard Mom's voice. And don't let the bed bugs bite. You heard Ma chuckling as you watched them go with a smile. Time had passed, but you weren't entirely sure how much. Sighing, you sat up on the couch. It was a good rest, and all of your tired muscles felt quite relaxed. You got up, planning on going to bed, and when something out the window caught your eye, your feet brought you right in front of the large windows spanning the length of the back wall. You stared out into the hills behind your house. As if on cue, your phone came on, alerting you of a new notification. It was Cope. Want to hang out on the hill tonight? Something inside you told you this was the right kind of night to take a trip out there. You sent him back a very quick message. Yeah. Heart off. <laughs> you went over to the front of the door, to the front door, and stepping over the threshold, you gave the living room one last glance over your shoulder. 
Then you shut the door behind you, silently, and made your way to the poppy hill. With light steps in the dark, you walked across the hill behind your house. Up ahead at the very top, silhouetted beneath the night sky, was a familiar figure already waiting there. Smiling, you wondered just how he always got there first. You even had the advantage of living closer. Then again, it maybe was only in your mind, but somehow Cove was intrinsically linked with this place. After all these years, it would be weird to scan this horizon and not find him there, as surreal as a shore without the sea. The distance between you and you was growing shorter by the second. Hearing the grass and the earth crunch under your feet, Cove turned a grin spread over his face as he saw you. You took your place standing behind him on the crest of the poppy hill, looking out over the ocean. Same as you've done on countless times since he first arrived, when you found him on the very same spot. Z. P. had officially broken the silence. The spell that had held you both in place. You looked at him unexpectedly. There's something I've always kind of wondered about. He cocked his head, giving you a sidelong glance. What did you think about me when we met? I was just a kid you'd never seen before, bawling his eyes out on the hill next to your house. He chuckled his eyes, drifting towards the sea beyond, before flicking back to you. The way his gaze pulled back to you made it clear that he was genuinely interested in the topic. Luckily for him, you remembered what initially struck you in that moment. It was as if it had only happened yesterday. Well, I remember noticing your very bright green hair. Cove burst into genuine laughter at your hmm. reply. <laughs> I guess that's fair. It did kind of stand out. Smiling, you continued to reminisce about that first meeting. I also remember trying to cheer you up. <laughs> I remember that, too. He ran a hand through his hair, and you knew his line of questioning wasn't at an end, even before he spoke again. I mean... Do you remember what you thought about me? You know, as a person, was I annoying or mean or... I wanted to get to know you. I didn't know what the feeling were at the time, but I thought you were cute right away. I thought you were special somehow. I just worried about you because you were so sad. I didn't know what to make of you at first. I don't really remember anymore. I just worried about you because you were so sad. Or, eh, this is probably more like it. I didn't know what to make of you at first. Cove nodded, accepting your response. Cove's hand drifted to the scar on his arm, his fingers consciously gliding over the mark. It was much less noticeable than it had been when the neon pink cast had first come off, shrunken gradually over the years as his body healed and dwarfed uh. in comparison to his growing body. So his fingers came back to it without thinking. He gave a half-smile, not meeting your eyes. <laughs> no matter what you were thinking, I, I doubt it was worse than what I had going in my mind. He raised an eyebrow at his vague words, wondering what it what it was that he meant. Cove lifted his head up, finally committing to meet your eyes fully once more. I remembered you that day. I remember it really well. I don't think I'd ever be able to forget. I can picture the way you looked back then when I first saw you standing right here. I still know the expression on your face when you chose to sit with me in the grass. He chuckled self derisively, interrupting his own monologue. <laughs> you scared me at first. I figured I'd be alone out there until I had to face my dad again, and then suddenly another kid appeared out of nowhere. It was startling, but I got over that fast. You were a strange person, and a sh in a strange place, but in the moment, you were exactly what I needed. Someday I could talk to freely about what was happening and how it made me feel. And you listened to me. You stayed with me. He sighed, then bit his lip. He gave a small smile. I, uh... I was a little bit spoiled growing up. <laughs> you let him continue. A little? Yeah, you were. It wasn't bad. You were dealing with a lot. A little? <laughs> Your teasing rolled easily over. Cove, who laughed in reply. He looked off again, seeking clarity for his thoughts in the expanse of the night sky. What I'm trying to say is, when I was younger, I viewed myself basically as the center of the universe. I didn't even imagine it wasn't like that. I mean... Things didn't simply happen. That would be weird, according to my little kid brain. It made far more sense that everything in my life had a specific connection to me somehow, right? He sought affirmation in you. Wavy brows raised as he tried to explain his childlike logic. At the time, you felt almost unreal. Like you weren't just anyone, some other kid who happened to live in that neighborhood with your own whole life that wasn't connected to Cove Holden. And to me, you were there so that you could find me when I was lost. Though, it turns out you were there, you, how you were there for that. You were trying to find me because something had sent you specifically to do that. I just didn't expect it to be my dad. I guess he knew more about that, about what I needed than I thought. 
He chuckled, shaking his head as he shook off the thought. Kind of expected it all to vanish like a dream when that night was over. I would have woken up and everything would be the same again. That's... I'd be back in my bed at home, my real home, with both my parents. The future was something I couldn't picture anymore. I didn't know what school would be like when I went back, or the table where I'd eat breakfast the next morning or anything. And if I couldn't imagine it, how could I think it was something actually happening? I couldn't grasp my new reality. It was too big for me to hold it all at once. So I never thought I'd see you again. Then Coke beamed at you, his eyes shining bright. <laughs> and I never, ever would have been able to guess that ten years later, when I was grown up, the two of us would still be together. Glad I met you. It's hard to believe it's been so long. Guess that makes me your dream come true. Mere words can encompass the joy you felt. It's so hard to believe it's been so long. Yeah. But it makes sense. Time flies when you're having fun. Being with you it must be like launching it in a rocket. But the smile faded from his face as his eyebrows drew together. That was the worst day of my life at the time. The day my family broke apart. It was too heavy for me to even think about. I felt that way for I don't know how long. He held a hand over his heart, connecting with the pain he felt as a child. And I looked at you and looked at you it's earnestly. Okay. But that was never really true. Things have only gotten better with me and, and with my dad and mom. It was a day we all needed. His eyes were going misty. So when I remember at that time right now, it's not that point that my life was over. It was only the moment that I met the woman I was going to be with. When I was crying to a stranger over what I thought I'd lost, I didn't have any idea that she would be the one thing in the world that I actually wouldn't be able to live without. I never want to lose you. You're so wonderful. Thank you for all of this. I never want to lose you. You won't. Uh, then you hugged him, then you gripped his shoulders, then you ruffled his hair, then you kissed him, then you teared up, then you grinned back to him. I got it. Then you kissed him. He went to the kiss, his lips soft against yours. Oh, did I press the button again? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I thought I did. Crow sighed contently. His voice was as delicate as the petals on the poppies which crowned this hill. Hazy, hey, I'm so grateful. Oh, the ladybug was moving again. I'm so grateful you always took care of me. You didn't even know what to say back to that. His heartfelt appreciation left you speechless. He tilted his head up. Sorry, I'm just so distracted by this ladybug. <laughs> I wonder if you can see it on the camera. You kind of can, actually. Hmm. He tilted his head up, thoughts lost in space, and the sparse clouds above. I wonder how late it is. I guess it doesn't really matter. My dad is fine with me being out whenever. You could just use your phone to check the time. You could still text your dad about what you're doing. You could still text your dad about what you're doing. I'm going to message my moms. My moms might care, but I don't feel like telling them. We wanted to make sure you message your mom about what was going on. Um, I'll just quietly nod. <laughs> Mr. Holden was content giving Cove all the freedom he could. Are you going to lay in the grass now? <laughs> well, how'd you know? Lucky guess, Cove. With the chuckle, Cove plopped down onto the ground and laid his back on his, his usual way of spending time there. You stayed standing, you sat down, you sat on Cove's chest. <laughs> you also laid on your back, laid down and snuggled against him. Of course I'm going to do that. You lowered yourself against Cove's side in the grass and wrapped an arm over his chest. Cove smiled at you and used his free hand to cradle your face. Once they fully settled in to relax on the hill, it felt like just the beginning of one of your nightly outings, but then you realized the sun was peeking out over the horizon. Holy sh- <laughs> We stayed out late. Cove spoke up with a disbelieving tone. Huh. It really was late. Your neighbor wasn't a stranger to being awake at dawn, however, not like this, he was normally an early sleeper, early riser. This unexpected sunrise particularly awed him. The two of you watched on- silent as the sun began to light the world. Cove then propped himself up on the back of his arms and looked at you with a soft expression on his face. Do you want to go back home? I could carry you if you're too tired. I'd rather, I'd rather stay a little longer. You couldn't resist the yawn, but you were serious. It couldn't be time to go ready. Cove chuckled affectionately and gripped you a little more. I get it. Okay, but it's been a long day. You've done a lot of things, like really a lot. It has to end sometime. I know, you're right. 
Since when were you okay with things ending? Is it really afternoon? Since when were you okay with things ending? That made him laugh again. It was a fair question. Because you made me feel better about it. And we can still stay if you want to. Co smiled brightly at you, as warm as any rays of sun that were tickling your skin. In that moment, you couldn't have appreciated him being there more. You said you waited yourself. You said you waited yourself to be comfortable. You leaned into Co because you leaned into Co. You bent yourself against Co for extra sport. He tilted his head against you. Good night, Co. Good morning, Co. You're my favorite neighbor. You didn't say anything anymore. <laughs> Good night. The two of you remained together on the familiar poppy hill where you first met until the world began to fade and blur. You were falling asleep. A few more gentle words drifted into your consciousness. See you tomorrow. Your eyelids dipped, but you felt good. You were safe and relaxed, and everything that had come before this had reassured you of that. You were confident that when you opened them again, things would be okay. You opened your eyes instead of the walls of your room. You were surrounded by open sky. It's not soft pillow and sheets underneath you, but the bed of the earth and grass that you've taken last night. The day welcomed you with a shining sun and refreshing breeze and the chirping song of birds. You cupped your face with your hands as you sat up, feeling the imprint of the blades of grass leaving lines into your cheeks. Z. Hearing your name, you lowered your, your hands and looked around. There he was, your most influential neighbor, Hope Holden. <laughs> He had made himself very comfortable laying on his stomach with jewelry and shoes taken off and flower, flower in his hand. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to you too. Co laughed and tickled with the overall situation and simply being able to spend time with this. <laughs> Told you I'd see you tomorrow. It's the exact same day, Co. Pretty safe bet we see each other nearly every day. Alright, good for you. I'm glad you're right. It's the exact same day, Co. <laughs> We were up until dawn. It doesn't make it a new day now just because we went to sleep later than normal. So. <laughs> and we disagree because to me it's not really the next day until I've been to bed and woken up. I agree with that. <laughs> um, but fine, I'll just have to make sure I see you tomorrow again. Probably the day after that too. That's the way. That way there's no argument. Cove turned his head up to the sky, his expression content. Looks like it's going to be a nice day. We'll have to come up with something to do to make the most of it. He trailed off, blinking slowly in the sunlight. Someday, when we're even older than we are now, I wonder what we'll end up remembering this moment for. What will we feel when we look back at it? Will it be the same as what we're feeling right now? It's nice. I can't see what the future is going to look like again, but I think that's alright. You're way too sentimental. Pretty sure I'm going to have forgotten all about this. I think it'll mark another new start for me. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Yeah, I'll go with that last one. Cove turned back to you, nodding in full agreement. He eyed that hill sprawling out before you and looked down below, where the wild hill of nature gave way to civilization. Your home in Cove's roof lay down at the bottom, neatly filled among the other houses in the neighborhood. Hey Z, I bet I could beat you in getting back to the road. You smiled amused by the wager that reminds you of so many moments in your youth. That's which I like it here, but... Okay, if we leave now. I can always come back to see the poppies and the fireflies again, right? Cove met your eyes, waiting for what you were going to say in response. Right, I like it. It really is going to be another nice day. You're amazing. You better do that. You're not getting out of it. We'll always be together in one way or another. I might be able to manage that. Uh, we'll always be together in one way or another. <laughs> you didn't know where that came from, but Cove blinked slowly, his eyes still locked on you. Though you didn't need to see his face to know that he adored you. If there had been any room for doubt, the tender way he looked would have filled it up. <laughs> You're one of a kind, huh? Cove beamed at you. His expression was so unlike the one he'd worn when you first found him here, swaddled in sadness and uncertainty. Yet, you couldn't help but glimpse that boy once more underneath his bright expression and matured Come features. On. He offered you a hand. You accepted it. You're palm fitting around his cove lifted himself up pulling you along too <laughs> our parents probably aren't gonna aren't gonna come running for us this time we gotta make our own call when i say that we can't hide away forever poppy hill is just one part of things there's more out there for us than this time in this place alone let's enjoy it 
You couldn't stay. You couldn't say whether you were the one that broke into a run, if the code had been the one that started it, or if your feet had simultaneously made that choice. On for both. What's that? Oh, sorry, something was on my screen. Uh, the end result was the same, with the two of you dashing down the hill like children, full of nostalgic revelry that could only come as an adult. As the wind whipped past you, you knew that family and friends were waiting at the end of your spirit. There were more memories to make after all. Life takes another step forward. Oh, is that the end? Oh, that was such a good game. That was a really long recording, though. But yeah. For a game that was actually free, that was amazing. Like, hats off to the creators of this game, because oh my god. Ugh. That final part of the game took seven hours. Hopefully my computer is not like dying from this game being recorded. Oh, these are the voice actors. I didn't realize they had different ones in different steps. I thought it'd be the same one just to put on a voice, you know? Imagine if I get copyrighted for this song. Oh, they had a lot of supporters. I'm happy for that, because this was a really great game. It deserves it all. But this game was, like, so smart in it being in, like, multiple stages of life, because, like, I feel like in some dating sims where it's like oh yeah that's your childhood friend but you just you don't feel that attachment but like i really felt like i actually grew up with that kid i i saw him grow up too really good writing like i remember after i recorded the first step of childhood i was telling my friend about it and they're like like just from the details i'll tell him he was like yeah that does sound like being a little kid Here we play we play Tetris while we wait. I got I got tiny Tetris here. <laughs> the sound's probably gonna go through. Oh wait, they actually already ended. Oops, 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 oops. Let's turn this off. Turn it off right after. See you again. Set for epilogue coming 2021. It is 2021! Oh! I got I maybe I gotta look at that sometime. Well, everyone, that was our life. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. That was that was a really fun game. I totally recommend people other people getting it and making their own path with it. But yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next game, maybe the epilogue, I don't know. But see you guys next time. Bye.